Welcome back to another innovation review. Today we're going to talk about the M880 from Flyer. First, let's talk about the looks. The M880 has this very stylish step through. We've got this bigger, beefier down tube, which is going to house our lockable, removable battery. Then we've also got this very cool integrated rear rack with a couple different attachment points for some of the flyer specific accessories that you can get with this bike. It does have some added capability with those big, beefier three inch tires and a very simple display that leaves the handlebars having this very sleek, minimalistic vibe to them. All in all, it looks like a bike that could handle its own on some of those rougher trails. Now, this isn't something you'd want to take off-road per se. We don't have any suspension here, but it has a look that if you got to jump off the sidewalk and ride through a field, or maybe you're on some of those dirt bike paths, things like that, it looks like it could handle its own. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a 500-watt rear hub geared motor with 50 newton meters of torque. Now, the way that they have marketed this bike and the way that it's designed, we don't really have any sort of get up and go, some jumpiness to it. If you are somebody who is transporting groceries or you've got your kid in the back, then that's something you'll appreciate because you are able to get up to those speeds of 20 miles per hour. This is a class two e-bike, but it's a nice, easy, smooth transition to get to those higher speeds. As far as motor noise goes, this was one of the quieter 500 watt motors that we have reviewed in the past. The tires that we have here do make a little bit of road noise when you're out here on the concrete, but even then, it was very difficult to hear the motor when we were using it. Next, let's talk about the battery. This is a 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour Samsung lithium ion battery. This particular battery does take quite a while to charge when we compare it to other batteries that are similar, but if having to charge the battery a little bit longer is not a big deal, you do get a lot of extras here with the battery. Starting with the fact that it is integrated into the down tube very well. It has this fairly seamless transition here and looks like it's part of the down tube. May surprise some people when you put your key in, unlock it, and pop it out that that was part of the bike. Like, oh, that's where the battery was. And once the battery is unlocked, very easy to get in and out. There is nothing impeding the access here. We should be getting anywhere between 30 to 50 miles per charge, depending on what level of pedal assist you're using and the terrain. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes we have here are these Tektro Aries MD M300 brake calipers with 180 millimeter rotors, both on the front and the rear. Now these are mechanical disc brakes, and like I mentioned in the ride test, they work really well right out of the box after Bryant from Velifix had installed them and tuned them a little bit. Everything was good to go, and I don't have any complaints about them. The brake levers up here on the handlebars were responsive enough to where I felt like I had some good control here. Like I said, no real complaints here, plus we do have the motor cutoff inhibitors in here, so that's just an excellent safety feature. And when the lights are on, if you pull these brake levers, it is going to activate the rear light on the rear fender. It's pretty rare that we see an integrated rear light on the fender like this, so it was a cool addition. When I first saw it, I was like, oh no, we gotta find some extra little batteries to make this thing work, but it is also integrated into the battery, so another plus here for from the braking system. Next, let's talk about the gears. The M880 comes with all Shimano as it relates to the gearing here. We have got this seven speed derailleur here in the back. We've also got the SIS index shifter up here on the right hand side, which you guys know I'm a fan of. Super easy to use, very intuitive. We've also got this Shimano freewheel here in the back. And then up here at the cranks, we have got a 53 tooth chain ring. We've got 170 millimeter cranks here and a dual sided aluminum guard, which is an excellent feature to have. It does protect the chain if you were gonna bump this into certain things. So an excellent feature to see here. Next, let's talk about the extras. The M880 comes with these fenders, both on the front and the rear. And the way that the fenders mount to the bike is very simple. It makes a lot of sense and they all fit really well. Sometimes when we get these e-bikes, we have to finagle the fenders a little bit. You know, we've got to, oh, tighten this one up, loosen this one up. The way that these installed were super simple. And then even up here in the front on that front fender, they have these little indents that go around the front fork. So that's just another cool little attention to detail with that front fender there. And then built into the frame, we have got this rear rack. 
As I mentioned in the beginning, this rear rack is pretty cool. They have got a bunch of different attachment points for flyer-specific accessories. So you can put on a rear basket. You can put on the child seat that they offer. And switching out those accessories is very simple and straightforward. Then we've got this front light up here in the front where the front lights go. And the cool thing here is that it is integrated into the battery, similar with that rear tail light that we talked about. Got to mention it again in the extra section because it is an extra. So both of those lights that we have here are integrated into the battery, which is nice. No weird batteries you got to carry around. If you got juice in the main battery, then you can utilize both those, and that's, uh, that's awesome. Normally, we don't talk about kickstands when it comes to extras. However, we've got this double-sided kickstand here at the bottom. And honestly, I'm not sure if this double-sided kickstand is 100% a pro or 100% a con. I think there are situations where this makes a lot of sense, especially if you are, you know, delivering cargo or you've got something in a back basket. It is really nice to be able to put that double-sided kickstand up and move to the back and, you know, do things that you need to do. But I do think with the weight of this bike, it is an e-bike. You know, it's not excessively heavy. It is kind of in that mid-tier range as far as weight goes. But putting that double kickstand on and off may be difficult for some people. And by the end, I think I was a fan. and I think that was a cool choice to go with here. But I would also like to see them offer a single kickstand as an option if you were somebody who didn't need the benefits of this double kickstand but didn't want to go through the hassle of using the double kickstand. Next, let's talk about the essentials. If you guys watched our Velofix assembly video, you will note that Bryant used a lot of his own tools, and that's just because he does it for a living, and he's, you know, he's got a bunch of park tools, so why isn't he going to use the park tools? However, if you were going to order this straight to your house, Flyer does provide you with everything you need to put this bike together. We've got the charger, we've got the tools necessary to do that. Now, personally, I would recommend going the Velofix route for most people. That is an extra fee that you would pay on top of ordering the bike. However, the fact that you would know that your bike was put together well, it was going to be adjusted to your height and your riding style, that the brakes are good, everything is installed correctly. From a safety perspective, it makes a lot of sense. And if I was somebody who wasn't very familiar with e-bikes or I hadn't been on a bike for a while, I would definitely push those sort of people to order the Velofix service and have them put everything together for you. So for anybody who kind of fits into that category, I would you know, highly recommend going the Velofix route. Next, let's talk about the suspension. So this bike doesn't have any suspension as we think about it, whether here up in the front forks or in the rear. So we don't have anything to talk about as far as that goes. But the other thing we like to talk about in suspension are the tires. The tires we have here are these 26 by 3 inch CST Big Boat tires. Now, they don't have any sidewall reflective stripes, which are things that we do enjoy to see on tires, but they do offer puncture protection. As far as PSI goes, you can fill them up to a maximum of 30. I never really messed around with bringing them lower, although I'm sure that's something you could do, and I imagine that that would smooth it right out a little bit more. And then they've got regular Schrader valves, so any bike pump you have laying around should be able to pump these up. The other part of suspension we like to talk about is the butt suspension. Up here for the saddle, we have got this Royal Gel Comfort Saddle, and I liked it. Fit me well. I felt like it made a lot of sense on this bike. You know, 90% of the time, I feel like I say, ah, oh, change it out. I would do something different. Like, eh, it's not that big of a deal to upgrade, but this seat was nice, fit me well. So there you go. Finally, a saddle that uh, I enjoyed. Next, let's talk about the controls. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got this very sleek, unbranded grayscale LCD display. And even though it is a little bit on the smaller side, all of the text was very large, especially the numbers that you really want to see when you're out riding. And it does give us a lot of information. And some of those readouts include the battery readout, the odometer, speed, the level of pedal assist that we're in, the trip distance, volume, and the amount of time that the bike has been on. On the left-hand side, we have got the mode button, which is going to turn the bike on and off. Also, we're going to use to cycle through some of those displays. And then we've got a plus and a minus, and that is going to allow us to go up in pedal assist levels and down in pedal assist levels. And if we hold down the plus button, that is going to turn on the front and rear lights. And then if we hold down the minus button, that is going to take us into walk mode. So the display is a little bit on the smaller side of things, but allowing us to keep the handlebars really smooth, really minimalist, and still providing a lot of readouts that are fairly easy to see, I think was a real win here. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. Flyer markets this as a family bike, something that you can ride around. Either you've got your kid on the back or you've got a rear basket here carrying groceries, carrying things like that. So it's really cool to see them design a bike that is specifically for their target market. And to do that, 
pretty well, in my opinion. Because we've got this step through, it is very approachable. The standover height here is 19 inches, very doable for most people. And then again, if you've got something sensitive in the back, you know, you've got the groceries or you've got a baby, it is nice that you can hop off that bike and really take control of that because of the low step over height. And then we've got a 19 and a quarter inch reach, meaning that we're gonna have a very upright riding position, which just makes it a very comfortable and enjoyable ride. Now, those are the two main measurements that I like to point out. If somebody was checking out a bike and saying, hey, what are the things I need to measure? The standover height and the reach are probably two of those things that you should look at maybe a little bit harder than the rest of those. But those other geometry measurements are a 22-inch minimum saddle height, 30.5-inch maximum saddle height, 27.5-inch width here at the handlebars, a 48-inch wheelbase, and a 73.5-inch length overall. As far as use case goes, I definitely see this being pretty utilitarian as far as being a family e-bike goes. So this is something you'd carry around the groceries, carry around the kids, you know, have a good time, head to the park, things like that. This bike is pretty much built for that. But because we have these quality components and this really nice rack, if you wanted to turn this into a commuter, I think you could definitely do that. And with those distances of 30 to 50 miles per charge, you definitely could get some pretty good commuting out of this bike. Now, it's not the fastest, it's not the nimblest, and I don't see this being something you'd want to dart in and out of traffic with. But if you got to head across town, you got some pretty good bike paths, then this would definitely be something that would be easy to turn into a commuter, especially looking at those you know small to medium distances. We don't have any suspension like we talked about, no front fork suspension, no rear suspension. So this isn't something you'd want to take off jumps. It's not something you're, you know, taking up the mountain. But as long as you're on a paved or somewhat level trail, you should really be able to go wherever you want to go on this bike. And then it's going to do it for the nuts and bolts on the bike. So let's go ahead and set it outside for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test on the M880. And I've got my assistant, Mr. Makai here. Makai, can you say hello? Hello everybody, and we are going to be testing this bike out in a riding sort of fashion. That's what we call it the ride test. All right, Makai, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's start out in pedal assist level one on this side, and we'll just see what sort of ride we have here. Adjust that a little bit. So it's fairly nice fairly smooth which is important especially if you got you know a little kid over here on the back we don't have any front or rear suspension so the fact that we've got those three inch tires kind of absorbing a lot of those bumps and things like that makes it a little bit better of a ride for people back there so pedal assist level one is taking us to about that nine mile an hour mark just a very easy sort of pace i'm in the third gear over here let's go ahead and keep it here for now you know, Makai, we're going to have to stop and hit this sign here in a second. Using that throttle. As you guys know, for me, I like going back and forth between using the throttle and the pedal assist quite a bit, so no difference here. All right, hitting the button. There we go. Let's back it up. All right, we're good to go, Makai. You ready? And we'll just throttle on over here. Now that we are out here in the neighborhood, let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist level two and see where that wants to put us. Right about that 12 miles per hour on pedal assist level two. Let's go ahead and bump that up to pedal assist level three. Taking us up to that 13, 14 mile an hour range there. And pedal assist level four. Shift up over here. Now right out of the box, and I say right out of the box, we all watch Bryant put it together. I can't take any credit for that. He went in and tuned it up just a little bit, so the shifting was perfect. One of the benefits of having Velofix put a bike together for you is it is tuned in ready to roll right out of the box. Putting those brakes to use there. And let's keep going. And finally, let's go up to pedal assist level five, mostly from a stop here. And the speed ramp up is nice and smooth. No jerkiness. Again, thinking about having a little passenger back there. It is nice that that's the case. 
and in gear seven we don't have any ghost pedaling or anything like that it's definitely easy it's definitely an easy pedal here but it doesn't feel like i'm just spinning around it feels like i'm still putting in a little bit of work so that is nice to see and we'll go ahead and we're gonna do a little braking test all right makaya go ahead and hit on those brakes boom how was that for you did you like that yeah. okay dope he said yes and now let's test out that throttle only now the thing about the throttle is no matter what level we have it in except for if it's off so if it's in pedal assist level zero we don't have any throttle but if it's in pedal assist level one or above we've got access to the full power of the throttle so just something to keep in mind now we're going you know get up to that 20 miles per hour with the throttle and it's gonna cap us off there right at that 20 miles per hour so we're gonna go ahead and hit a yui here because if i pass by the cows without us stopping by to say hello i'll be in trouble and nobody wants that i've got stuff to do guys i don't have time to be in trouble okay you want to see the cows makaya A nice little shady spot here. Oh. You see the cows? Look them over there. Can you see the cows? Over there taking a little nap. What do you think cows dream about? The cheese, maybe? Yeah, yeah maybe. All right, we'll say bye, cows. So see you later. You want to see the donkeys? Okay, guys, we're off to see the donkeys. Right, let's go see those donkeys, Micaiah. And the ducks? Well, if we're gonna see the donkeys, we can see the ducks. Let's go ahead and put it back in Pell Assist level five. And yeah, we are cruising. How you doing back there, bud? You doing all right? All right, got a yes of approval. Huh? You saw something over there? What'd you see? Oh, you saw one of the ducks? Okay. Again, the power ramp up here, even in pedal assist level five, is nice and gradual, very smooth. And the general feel of the bike is pretty quality. I know that we've probably seen a lot of the B-roll we shot already, and it looks really cool. And some bikes, you know, they look really cool, and maybe in the geometry sections they sort of fail, and the bike's not a very good bike, just something to look at. This is one of those bikes that feels like it looks. It looks like quality. It's got that cool, thicker design to it. A lot of industry standard components on here. Some nice brakes here, even though they are mechanical instead of hydraulic, which for this particular bike, you know, only going up to uh, 20 miles per hour, not a huge deal. If it were me and I was keeping this bike long-term, I would probably want to put some hydraulic brakes on here just because if I'm using it, I've got my Kai in the back here. And so having that extra stopping power, I think is something that I would you know, personally want to invest in. Um, however, for most people, it's not really going to be that big of a deal and you probably won't notice as long as the brakes are tuned correctly and they work right. You know, they do what they need to do, which is stop the bike and you'll be good to go. Now, as far as motor noise goes, this is one of the quieter 500 watt motors we've tested. So we do get a little bit of that road noise from the tires, but even taking that into consideration, it still is a really quiet ride. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of off-roading, a little bit of urban off-roading here. It shifts really well, super easy. You do notice when you start hitting some of these bigger bumps, the lack of suspension. So we've been on a lot of those fat tire e-bikes that, you know, they're full suspension bikes. And so having the, uh, having the full suspension, then you go into something without suspension, you can tell the difference when you start hitting some of that bigger stuff. You see anything? See any turtles? I don't see any. Oh, there's one. You see that big one? 
See that big one right there? Big old flat one. There he is. You see him? That's a big one, and he is fast in the right environment, you know? It's like that's a pretty good life lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and take it on a little bit of a trail here. Back her up. You heard that puppy? That sounds like a big puppy. And as you guys know, I am a fan of thumb throttles over twist throttles. I think this one is a pretty good example of a bike where it would be nice to have a thumb throttle. So we do have this like nice big fat, like these are like oversized ergonomic grips, which are excellent. And I really like this one, especially on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, we've got that same sort of half grip and this is nice. But if I was going to be using the throttle, it really does disrupt the, the grip quite a bit. So if I've got these two fingers on this thumb throttle, sort of like this, then there's not really a good spot for me to grip on here. It just disrupts the whole grip, you know, as, as a total thing. So this is definitely a bike where I would look at upgrading to, uh, to a thumb throttle. Now, if I'm just using pedal assist, one of the things that is nice when we compare it to other, you know, half twist throttles like this, is this is so big and so oversized, I really can get a really good grip, like a very solid grip if I'm not using throttle. So if I'm just in pedal assist, I really feel like I've got good control over the entire bike, which for most of them, it's not the case. It's not quite big enough to where it feels like a real grip, but we've got these oversized grips on this side and the oversized half grip over here. So I can get an entire fist, you know, until my entire hand over here and get a really good grip on the bike. So that's a plus in that department. However, I'd still probably shoot for the same style grip over here with a, a thumb throttle underneath. Now we are on this sort of trail, you know, we got some grass tufts we're going over, some ruts and things like that. And it's not too bad for me. How's it for you back there? Are you having fun? Are you bouncing around a lot? You are? You wanna slow down a little bit? Are you saying yes to every question I ask you? I thought so. I thought so, Micaiah. So let's go ahead and let's find some shade real quick. And then I want to show you guys the walk mode on here. There's some shade. You want to get rid of that shade, Micaiah? Yeah. yeah. Out here doing this in the afternoon sun. It is pretty hot, but we're only going to be out here for a couple of minutes. And we'll head back in and get a nice cold glass of water. Relax in that AC. That sounds like a good idea. So, for the walk mode on here, you doing all right? Nice. Good job. Okay, so for the walk mode, you are going to be holding down the minus button, which is similar. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to think about it when we've got the three keypads over here. It's like the middle, up and down. They're all here on this line, so just remember that the minus one is gonna be how we enter walk mode, because if we hold down the plus button, that's gonna turn on the light. So we've got the light turned on over here, and we've also got that backlight, if you can see that, also integrated. Is that pretty cool or what? Yeah. A very good plus there. So let's go ahead and turn those off. Don't need those. And then all we're gonna do is hold down this minus button. See that one, Micaiah? We're gonna hold it down and then watch, watch something magical is gonna happen. It's gonna go into walk mode and then we can just walk the bike along. And as soon as we let it go, we are out of it. So back in walk mode. And then if we let it go, we're gonna turn off. So I like that a little bit more when we compare it to some of the other walk modes where it kind of automatically goes by itself and then you either have to hold it down for another three seconds or you know tap on the brakes. Now these ones also have motor inhibitors so if that was the case that would be the quickest way to turn off walk mode but with this one you have to be holding it down. And I think the way that they market the bike it is more for a family so you would probably have you know, your kids back there. And so I, I guess I like that from a safety standpoint. It's like, as soon as I let it go, 
it's stopping, I'll retain control of the bike and I won't have a moment where it's like, oh, it's still going, what do I do? So I think that was the right move as far as the walk mode goes. Yeah, and it's handling these off-road trails very nice. Now this is not anything, you know, insane. Like I mentioned, just a couple of ruts here and there, a little bit of mud, it's rained sort of recently. But for the most part, this is uh, easy going on those three inch tires. Then, like I mentioned, once we start hitting some bigger stuff, you start to feel it a little bit more since we don't have any suspension. Now, there's not really a whole lot of good ways to add suspension for a passenger, but if you were riding this around by yourself and you just had the basket back there, then you know you could add a suspension seat post or something like that. That would really bring up the ride. Comfort quite a ways. You see the donkeys? What does the donkey say? Okay. And when we're done with the review, what do we say? We say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that is going to do it for our review of the M880 from Flyer. We've really enjoyed this one. And if you guys want to know more, we will have a link to Flyer's website down below. And if you guys have any questions for us, specific questions, something we didn't cover in the review, let me know in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.